Sometimes when editing you have these crazy ideas in your head, but you don't know how to bring them into reality. Don't worry guys, these 10 editing tricks are the key to becoming a better editor in no time. Trick number 1. Editing your videos to the music in just a few clicks. First move the playhead to the beginning of the song and make sure nothing is selected. We're gonna set some markers on the rhythm of your song. To do that let it play and hit M on your keyboard every time you hear a beat. When you're done you see all these markers in the timeline. Next we're gonna sync the clips in the project window with the music in the timeline. You can shoot them yourself or you can download them from Storyblocks. They are sponsoring today's video by the way, but more about that later. First, rearrange the clips in the order you want them to be in the timeline. Then hover your cursor over the image and search for a starting point. Now to select it, hit I on your keyboard. Move further again and hit O to set an out point. Now if you drag it in the timeline, only the selected part will be imported. Do that for all your clips and now we're gonna sync them with the markers. Hold down shift and select the first one. Scroll all the way down and then select the last one. Now when all the clips are selected, click the automate to sequence button. For the ordering, choose sort order. You can also use selection order, but then Premiere will look to the order in which you selected the clips. Now go to placement and choose unnumbered marker, then click on OK. This works really well for simple edits. But also for music videos for example. All I hear go get the money, so I go get it. Get it. Hate means I do something right. right. So I'm a Trick number two, pulling a better green key. Sometimes when you make a selection, Premiere doesn't remove all the greens in your video. Next time, try holding down control on your keyboard. You can then literally see the color picker get bigger. When you now click on the greens, it will take a bigger selection of the colors. This basically works everywhere in Premiere, where you can select a color. For example, when you're color grading with the metric curves or the HSL secondary. Number three, let's say you chopped up this project, only to realize that you accidentally removed a piece of audio. Good luck finding it back. Now there is a trick that will help you find it back in just a second. Select a video clip in the timeline and press F on your keyboard. This will open up the source monitor. Now use the scroll bar to zoom out a little bit and here you will see a selection. That selection is basically the clip from the timeline. To bring back the audio, click the waveform icon and drag it underneath the video. And there you go. And that brings us to trick number 4. So you're editing in a 4K timeline, but some of your clips are just 1080p. When you import them, you need to scale them up every time and it's time consuming. Instead you can right click the clip and choose set or scale to frame size. But there's an even faster way. Open up the edit menu on top, then on the bottom choose preferences. Click on media. Now set the default media scaling to set to frame size or scale to frame size. The difference between these two is simple. Set to scale size will adjust the scale property so that it fits in your sequence. Scale to frame size will rasterize your video to the same dimensions of your project. And this can make it look less sharp, which is why I choose set to frame size. Because then the original resolution will maintain. Awesome. Now trick number five. Putting all your videos, pictures and effects in one layer without nesting them. You can do that by using a graphics layer. Let's say we want to create a text animation. In the essential graphics panel you can see the text layer. Here I have a background. Now you can simply drag it from the project window underneath the text layer. Let's say I want to animate the text, then go to the effects browser and find the transform effect. And you can also drag that inside this box. Now if we go to the effect controls we can see that the transform effect is also applied to the background. And that's a problem because we only want the text to be animated. The solution to that is a folder. Simply click the new folder icon and drag the transform and text layer into that folder. Now the transform effect will only be applied to the text layer and not to the background. Also when you drag an effect into the essential graphics panel it will only be applied to the layers underneath it. Good to know. But I know a faster way to create text animations. That is simply downloading templates. Once it's installed it will appear automatically in the essential graphics panel. Drag it in the timeline and make sure it's selected. Then back in essential graphics all you need to do is change the text to customize it to your liking. By the way, I just downloaded this from the Storyblocks plugin, so I don't even have to leave Premiere. But you can download more than just templates. You can find more than a million high quality royalty free stock videos from all over the world. Nature clips, space and planets, sports and so much more. All of that in HD and 4K resolution. If you need some music or sound effects, the Storyblocks plugin got you covered. All you need to do is click the download button and bam, it's in the project window. We actually have our very own landing page full of videos that we made specifically for you. Most of them are shot in a lock profile and that way you have all the control when color grading the footage. On other stock websites you need to pay an expensive price per clip but on Starblocks you will get everything for one set price. And you can choose to pay it monthly or annually. Doesn't matter. And don't worry about licensing or copyright issues, Storyblocks will take care of that. I've been using Storyblocks for as long as I'm an editor and I truly recommend it to any creative. So take back creative control with Storyblocks unlimited royalty free stock library and tools today by going to storyblocks.com forward slash Premiere Basics or just click the link below.
And now, back to Premiere. Trick number six. If you want motion blur, you need to use a transform effect. Then you need to increase the shutter angle every time you use it. Yeah, it's, it's annoying. A quick workaround is simply adding the transform effect to a random clip or a color mat, and then go to the effect controls. Increase the shutter angle to 180 degrees, that will introduce a natural motion blur, and then just right click the transform effect and choose save preset. I call it MB transform for motion blur. Now when I search for the transform effect, my preset always comes first. Boom. Trick number seven. You want to create an animation in After Effects, so you right click your clip and choose replace with After Effects composition. That's nice, but what if you want to create an animation from scratch? and you don't have a clip or something else to send to After Effects. To fix that, go to the new item button and choose color mat. Choose a color and then click on OK. Now drag it in the timeline. You can now right click it and use it as an After Effects composition. Once it's open, you can remove the color mat. It's that simple. Now these dynamic links can slow down your playback by a thousand times. Which brings us to trick number eight. To fix this linked comps playback, duplicate it by holding Alt and dragging it one track up. Then right click the top layer and choose render and replace. Make sure the format is set to QuickTime and then click on OK. Once it's done, you can disable the linked comp because we don't need it anymore. But we'll keep it just in case we need to adjust something. Now the linked comp is just a normal video and it will play back super fast. Speaking of speed, trick number nine. There are so many actions we do in Premiere that require so many steps. But did you know that you can create a shortcut for almost everything in Premiere? Let me show you. Go to edit and then keyboard shortcuts. On top, you can see the F keys. They are in most cases unused, so you can customize them. On F1, F2 and F3, I have my E's in, ease out and linear keyframes. I'm using F5 to create nested sequences and F6 is used for adding frame holds. You can customize it to your own liking. Trick number 10, animating subtitles. Creating subtitles in Premiere can be done in just a few clicks, but you can't animate them and you also can't add effects to them, unless you know this trick. First select all the subtitles in the timeline and go to the graphics and titles menu on top. Then choose upgrade to graphics layer. Now you can add as much effects to them as you want and you can still edit the subtitles because they're just normal text text layers. Now the reason why big creators like Mr. Beast use these subtitles is because it increases watch time and that will contribute to your channel blowing up. So to learn everything about how to create subtitles like Mr. Beast in Premiere Pro, click the video on my left. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay creative.